Hi, in this video we will talk about consistent hashing. Consistent hashing, I am sure you guys will be aware, is one of the most critical aspects of system design concepts, right? And it is also one of the most asked uh, interview questions, I mean in some kind of an application of system design, right? Consistent hashing is a critical topic in, in distributed systems. Uh, we'll not just discuss what consistent hashing is, we'll definitely discuss that, but we'll also discuss an entire step-by-step -step process of a complete illustration in achieving co consistent hashing, right? And what are the things that happen when you do a node removal, node addition, right? And scaling, scale down, scale up. So we are going to see how consistent hashing works. And then we'll talk about various advantages and also some risks in implementing consistent hashing, right? So let's get started. So consistent hashing, what is consistent hashing, right? Consistent hashing is nothing but distributing data across multiple nodes in a consistent manner, which ensures that minimum data reassignments are required on scaling up or scaling down, right? Whenever you talk about a distributed system, and we are going to take a look at that, there are multiple nodes in that system, right? And data gets persisted across those physical nodes, right? When that happens, you have to uh, maintain a scenario where you have uh, the data being assigned to the nodes are in a consistent manner right and the reassignments are minimum so that you don't have to uh, whenever you are scaling uh, up or scaling down so that you don't have a lot of downtime right now how do we achieve consistent hashing there are at a high level two three steps right uh, first thing is to set up the nodes and the hash ring right uh, the setup of the, uh, the consistent hashing ring, like where will the nodes be in the ring, right? Next is the data placements, like how do the data gets placed physically in one of these nodes in the, uh, in the hash ring, right? And then the node addition or removal, like what exactly happens when there is a scale up or scale down when there are new nodes added to the ring or new nodes are removed from the ring, right? So how does the data uh, reassignment works? So let's look at how that will happen. So first, let's say we have a hash ring with three nodes. Okay, so we have node one, node two, and node three in a hash ring which are equidistant from each other, which basically means that which are equally dividing the hash functions and the hash segments where data will get stored. So let's say we have a hash uh, total segment of zero to 99 values, right? And if we have to distribute them across these three nodes, let's say the hash uh, uh, distribution happens something like node 1 contains all the records which has a hash value of 0 to 33 node 2 contains all the data records which has a hash value of 34 to 66 and node 3 contains all the data records which has a hash value between 67 to 99 so a total hash data set of 0 to 99 so any record uh, that gets persisted in this data set in this network will get will get assigned to one of these nodes depending on the hash value that gets uh, computed on the placement of the data right so now if we have this kind of a setup so the entire hash ring gets segmented into different data sets right so something like this data set between node 3 and node 1 contains the hash data range of 0 to 33 so because node 1 whatever happens in this data set moves to node 1 and whatever hash value that comes between 0 to 33 will move to node 1. So this segment is uh, for hash range of 0 to 33 and the other two are uh, 34 to 36 and 67 to 99, right? Now let's say we have a table where there are three records, okay? We'll compute the hash function of each of the records, right? So let's say the first row computes a hash value of 21, right? So there can be multiple hash functions that can be there but say consider whatever hash function that we have we have chosen the hash uh, value for the first record comes to be 21 hash value for the second record com uh, comes to be 57 and the hash value for the third record uh, comes to be 71 right so now with these hash values how will the data get persisted in the in the nodes right so ha first record which has a hash value of 21 which node contains the hash value will contain uh, a record containing hash value 21 is node 1 right because that is containing every records that has uh, a hash value between 0 to 33 and 21 is between that range so the first record is going to go to um, node 1 right 
The second record similarly has a hash value of 57. So that will get persisted in node 2 because node 2 is uh, persisting all the records uh, which has hash value between 34 and 36. And similarly, the third record which has a hash value of 71 is going to get persisted in node 3, right, which has a hash range of 67 to 99, right. So now this is how the data placements occur. You have a hash uh, ring, you have three nodes in the hash ring, data is getting equi uh, uh, like uh, getting persisted uh, equally in a consistent manner. And when we have three records which are computing the different based on the different hash functions, they are getting placed in different nodes, right. So now let's look at what will happen when there is a scale up or scale down. So uh, what we had, this is what we had, right? A uh, simple hash uh, ring with three nodes and three data getting placed in three different nodes based on the hash value. Now when we are adding a node, right, that is when we are scaling up. So let's say we add a node 4 in the hash ring, right? When we add a node 4 in the hash ring, what this means is this hash segment of 67 to 99 obviously will get split right so it will be between say uh, the data record will be uh, split between so it was 66 67 to 99 we are splitting that between 67 to 72 in node 4 and 73 to 99 in node 3 okay so which means the data segments now become uh, 67 to 72 in this uh, uh, hash segment and the 73 to 99 between this um, hash segment right so what this means is whatever data now gets persisted in this hash ring so say if it has a value anywhere between the hash value is anywhere between 67 to 72 will get now placed in node 4 and which data is that that is the third row which is which has a hash value of 71 previously it was persisted in node 3 but with the scale up there will be a data reassignment that is because the hash value 71 is no longer in the range for node 3, right? It is now falling in the hash range where, which is contained in node 4. So, which means that their data is going to get reassigned, right? This is how when you are adding the nodes, the data is getting reassigned. But notice one thing, the benefit, none of the data in node 1 or node 2 is touched because their hash value and hash range is same. That is not changing, which is where that remains same. So, that makes it easy for minimum reassignment of the data, right? Now, let's take a look at what happens if you are removing a node from the hash ring, right? That is your scaling down. Again, similarly, we had this is the uh, initial setup that we had. So, let's say we are removing the node 2, right? So, when we remove node 2, that entire node uh, gets removed. So, which means that entire segment, those two hash segments also get, uh, they are not there, right? And now that entire segment is 34 to 99 because we don't have another node. So, hash uh, the node 1 is automatically is anyways containing 0 to 33, but everything else because we remove node 2 will automatically get reassigned to the next node in the ring which is node 3. So, node 3 will have contain all the records which compute hash value between 34 and 99, right. So, that is how the reassignment is happening. So, which means the record which has a hash value of 57 and there is no node 2 that will get reassigned to node 3, right. So, node 3 will now contain both the records of, uh, which has a hash value of 57 as well as a hash value of 71, right. So, that is how it happens when there is a uh, scale down when you are removing the node. The data basically gets reassigned to the next node in the system. But everything else in the hash ring remains same, like for node 1, nothing is changing. Whatever data was there is uh, continuing, will continue to stay, right. So, now let's take a look at some of the benefits and risks of uh, hash uh, consistent hashing right uh, benefits obviously you can understand scalability is a major benefit because it allows for easy scaling of distributed systems right when a new node is added to the system it takes the responsibility for a portion of the hash ring like we saw which reduces the load on the existing nodes right so this approach enables horizontal scaling as the addition of new nodes distributes the data and the workload more evenly across the systems which accommodates for increased traffic uh, or data volume right load balancing definitely because uh, consistent hashing ensures that <clears throat> data is distributed evenly and uh, the workloads are distributed evenly across the nodes in the distributed system uh, by mapping the data items to positions on the hash ring 
each node is responsible for a segment of that ring like we saw right and therefore a portion of that of the entire data set so this basically this distribution basically helps prevent any kind of hot spots uh, any overloading of one individual node right which basically improves uh, the load balancing and better utilization of uh, system resources right data locality uh, with consistent hashing uh, the data items that are similar or related often get mapped to nearby positions on the hash ring or maybe even on the same node on the hash ring right so this property basically enables data locality uh, which be, which means that the data items with similar keys are likely to be stored and accessed from the same node or nearby nodes right so which improves the system performance by reducing the network latency or hops between the systems or increased cache efficiency right and that is what our next benefit is cache efficiency caching efficiency because uh, by using the same consistent hashing mechanism cache nodes can efficiently determine which items to store and which items to retrieve right so caches can be distributed across multiple nodes and cons consistent hashing ensures that the items are consistently mapped to the same cache node which maximizes the cache hit rates and improves the overall uh, performance of the caching right and last but not the least is fault tolerance uh, like if a node fails like we saw or becomes unavailable the data items that that node was responsible for automatically get reassigned to the neighboring nodes right so this fault tolerant mechanism helps maintain high system availability right and prevents any kind of data loss or disruption right so those are some of the benefits but there are multiple other benefits also now let's take a look at some of the risks i wouldn't say those these are disadvantages but these are risks because uh, and you will see why first is uh, hash function selection uh, uh, there is a, another video in security that i have discussed about different kinds of hashing functions please do take a look i'll put that video in the description below but hash function selection the choice of hash function plays a very crucial role in the effectiveness of your consistent hashing right different hash functions may have like varying degrees of collision probability right distribution uniformity uh, computational uh, efficiency right so selecting an appropriate hash function that meets the specific requirements of the system you know, what you are designing is important to achieve a balanced and efficient distribution of data and that is what you want it's consistent it's efficient it's uniformly distributed right next is node failure handling uh, while consistent hashing provides fault tolerance like we saw but uh, by redistributing the data upon node failures the process of redistributing the data can introduce temporary performance degradation right uh, or say increase network traffic right if a node fails and its responsibility is reassigned to other nodes the sudden increase in data re, uh, assignment or reassignment to those nodes uh, can strain their resources right can impact the system performance so that is one of the risks next is uh, increased complexity obviously implementing consistent hashing adds complexity to your system architecture the entire uh, design and management of your system right uh, the need to maintain a consistent hash ring and track the node positions uh, for in node positions in that ring uh, requires additional logic and coordination right which is apart from your business logic right this complexity can make the system harder to understand debug maintain uh, which especially when dealing with node additions removal or failures so which is where it in it adds a lot of complexity in the system design uh, last but not the least i would say uh, inefficient resource utilization yes in certain cases consistent hashing may result in sub optimal resource utilization also like for example if the number of nodes in the system is significantly smaller than the number of segments on the ring right there may be an imbalance between the resources allocated to each node and the actual workload or data distribution right so some nodes may be underutilized while the others may be overloaded right so which leads to inefficient resource allocation and which again leads to potential performance issues right so you have to be very careful when you are designing consistent hashing for your systems but overall consistent hashing has proven to be very useful right and it is also heavily used in the industry like for example cassandra dynamo db etc they all use consistent hashing in the background to distribute their data across nodes right so hopefully this was useful thanks for watching